Good. I said good afternoon. Uh, hi, everybody. Welcome. This is the uh, Getting Paying Clients for Your Coaching Practice. This is session number five of the, the ongoing weekly series we're doing. Uh, and this afternoon, we're talking about what do you do when you get a client? And I remember getting mine was pretty scary, but you've gone, we've done the sales, the marketing, the conversion. And now we're going to look at you've got your first coaching client or a coaching client. What do you do on that first coaching session? What are some of the best practices, things to do, things maybe not to do? So um, Gareth and I are going to talk about these things in principle. I remember my just my, my first ever client was 18, 19 years ago, and they, they finally said yes at the sales meeting which was a surprise enough to be fair and at about six months in they said to me uh you know i was talking to i said did you know that you were my first ever client in this business thinking they wouldn't they had no clue and they turned around and said yeah well we sort of guessed we, we sort of thought you were and i said well what why what, what gave you that idea and the guy said well you didn't know what you were doing he said but you, you were a nice guy so we thought we'd give you a shot so that's what destroyed my professional coach persona <laughs> um, but i have found that the first the first session the first coaching session after the deal is done is one of the most critical meetings that we have with with clients so um uh, what's what did, what's your experience gareth i mean you've obviously been this for a long time as well what are your thoughts around the first the first coaching session the first coaching is absolutely well, i mean the first 90 days really are critical i think but the first coaching session because if you've done your work right if you've done your marketing right and your sales right you've got somebody who has just parted with a lot of money but is really excited yeah. sitting across from you and now it's now it's time for you to deliver now you've, all the promises that you made before you've got to deliver in. um i think one of the things is people go uh yeah you know, i think we've talked about it before Dave. there's there's two emotions you know there's there's overwhelm but also there's underwhelm yeah as well and it's managing that uh because you know and um you know i know i know we've talked about this before but say time is the issue and you go, you go, um, you know, you finally get to the first, the first coaching session. You go, well, you know, you should plan your time. You know, I've just paid you quite a lot of money and you're telling me to plan. Like, this is ridiculous, right? Um, so there can be a bit of underwhelm as well, right? And it's, it's managing that tightrope of overwhelm and underwhelm. Yeah. It's important not to give too much away mm -hmm. on that first session as well. Or, or not too much away, but get them doing too much. You've got to get them doing something. Uh, but it's important not to get them doing too much because overwhelm sets and fatigue sets in and, and you won't get them back next week. Yeah. But I think that real, that first session is all about vision. Wouldn't you agree? It's all about. I think so. Yeah. Thinking. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, you, should have done that. you should have done that in the, in the sales really. Yeah. Yeah. But I've but also found that when, 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 when people say they want to, that they want to work with us and we want to help them out, and they go, yeah, this is great. And we think they want to look at sales and profits and marketing or whatever it is. And by the time between the sales conversation, if you like, and the first coaching conversation, they speak to their partner, their husband, their wife, their kids, their whatever it is, and, and they change their view. And I found regularly that when I sit with someone on the first session, you go, okay, so going for my, you know, for my notes, we want to, you know, we're going to double your business and increase your profits. And they go, oh, well, actually... It'd just be really great if I could have weekends off. You know, go crazy, and they they've changed tack completely. And I think it's good to do like a temperature check as well, just to make sure that the assumptions we made during the sales and marketing process are actually true. Because regularly they're they're not. And I found people they take that they they stand behind numbers. Yeah, I want to build my sales. I want to build my margins and cash flow and this sort of thing. Because they sort of think in business they that's what they should be talking about. But actually, mm -hmm. that's not what they want. What they want is time with the kids or, you know, or less time with the kids. I don't know. <laughs> Depends whose kids I've got. But they, I think you've got to do a real temperature check and just make sure that what they thought they wanted is still what they wanted. Because I've done it a number of times with clients where I've just gone straight into what I thought they said at the sales meeting. And then three months mm -hmm. later, they've gone, well, you know what? That wasn't what I thought. It's not going to plan and oh, I'm off or I don't like it. And it's because mm. I've got it wrong. I haven't adapted to their actual emotional needs rather than their logical business needs. And that's what temperature checks a good start as well.
Hey, the other thing coupled with that, David, is people lie. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, because they do. <laughs> so, so what you thought was going on isn't actually what's going on. And, and for, for me, I usually get to a session and, and then we actually start delving into the numbers. And, you know, quite often you, re you reveal bigger problems than, you know, was first talked about. And, you know, well, you know why are you paying that guy? And what's happening over there? And, and stuff. Uh, I think you hit the nail on the head. You said, well, is it? Because it's it's really important when you're getting a goal out of someone that you you say is it is I always go is it a more or less goal in as much as do you want more time with the family or less time in the office they might sound the same thing yeah but they're not really okay so so identifying whether it's a more or less thing is is really important I think. yeah no I mean I've seen it's quite I've never mentioned before but I remember sitting with a it was a husband and wife team running a company and I was there doing my my thing and I said yeah wouldn't it be great when you can you know make more money work less spend more time together and as soon as I said spend more time together <laughs> she was start shaking her head she said no no, no, I, don't, no. Yeah. <laughs> I want to spend more time in the spa. I want to spend more time traveling. I don't particularly want to spend more time with his nibs. You know, he's like, oh, okay, got it, uh, which is fine. So we have to be very careful about assumptions of what people want because it's, it's not always clear. Um, but I think as well, what I've done at the, the at the sales meeting, if they've said, yes, we want to get started between there and the first session, there's that sort of delay. And I think, I think as you say, I get them doing something. Yeah, got to do something. Yeah, we do it begin to do it, the disc personality profile yeah. or something like that, yeah. or send them a book or give them some video to watch or something to keep them, you know, keep them going to a certain extent. And so when we have the first conversation, they've had to think about what they want to achieve and how we're going to go. And, and, a, and a great opening question can just be, so you know what do you want to get from this? We do the sales are done now. Now I'm your I'm your coach now, not your sales guy. Well, I'm your coach. What do you want to get from this? Tell, tell me the truth. Give me a list. Give me a shopping list that you want to achieve, and let's just have a look at it and really go right down back to basics. And because uh, when you're not selling, I think yeah. they 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 respond differently as well. Yeah, definitely. And, and I think you know I, uh, one of the things I was going to say is really important for me that I introduce them to the coaching format. Yeah. as in the format that all my sessions take. And I've got a very specific way of running a coaching session that works yeah. for me. And uh, I, don't, I, don't, you know, I don't do it robotically every, every week, but I, sure. I change up a bit. But, but for me, I have a very specific way of doing that. But uh, two questions I ask is, um, so say, say we're sat down in six months and we're, we're having a coffee. You know, what, what, would you like to, what would you like to be saying to me? um do when we have that coffee but the second one is also important and i know we're coaches and we're meant to be positive and we're meant to be blah, 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 but but i do what's called a pre-mortem don't know if you've ever heard, heard of this <laughs> pre-mortem <laughs> i do i do a pre-mortem and i say look so we sat we sat down six months and we've had this coffee what would you like to say to me my next question is and usually they say something like i want to thank you so much gareth for helping me and i've got amazing business and blah, blah. yeah and I say, okay, well, let's say we sit down in six months and that hasn't happened and we, we failed and we haven't achieved what we're going to, I know we're not supposed to be talking about that, but, but you know what, you know, what are the reasons behind that? What do you think the reasons behind that will be? Yeah. You know, usually I'll come out with something like, well, I didn't do my homework. I didn't commit. You know, other things got in the way. Yeah. Then I'm going, okay, well, what can we do to minimize that? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what can we do? Because remember, part of our job is removing that interference, you know, but, uh, what's the equation? Uh, performance is potential minus interference, mm -hmm. right? So our job as coaches is to remove that interference. Yeah. So I say, well, how can we get rid of that? Well, you know, what are we going to do to stop that? You know, how do we stop other things getting in the way of this? Yeah. You know, it's really, really interesting. It gives them ownership over it. it gives the, yeah. the client ownership over it. Yeah. But it just gets it out in the open. Yeah. You know, because I'll say, look, I'm pretty busy at the moment. I actually don't think I've got time to do this. You know, <laughs> right. it might say something like that. You know, uh, well, I feel like how do we give you more time? Because then that comes into the time things. So how do we give you more time? Right? How do we how do we do it so that this works? Yeah, I think one of the, the the key things I think that we bring to the the relationship as coaches compared to consultants or non exec directors, this sort of thing, is that accountability part where you know, our clients are accountable to us as we're accountable to them. It's a two way thing, and I'm I'm really I, I do ask people, how would you like me to hold you accountable? You know, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to be you know in hard and bring the baseball back around? And you know, is that what you want, or is it just a very gentle tap and a text message reminder? and you can sort of choose your yeah. poison to a certain extent uh, and and normally they it's I always find it intriguing 
they because I wouldn't know if somebody asked me that I don't think but anyway but they tend to know you know I've got some clients who they want me to you know really hammer them if they haven't done their homework or whatever it is other clients they want a more gentle lighter touch it gets the same effect from them but they want to how do we hold them accountable what do we do to to hold them and how what what language can we use and with some clients it depends who they are we can use you know uh, a bit of fun a bit of humor which is fine other clients you've got to be much more conservative with the approach and much more in what are called pure coaching but i found this pure coaching approach that is in all the textbooks doesn't work for everybody it's, you've got to use a personality to be held accountable as well and and make it a bit of fun but you know, how do you want to be held accountable is a key one and i've had people um i remember one client that he, he said if you want to really hold me accountable he said just tell my wife I haven't done my homework and she'll pounce on me. It's like, great. That I sort of recognize, you know, yeah. and uh, he hadn't done his, his homework. And uh, we were based, this women were based down here in the, in the old house in Metz. And I phoned his wife. I said, look, he's not, he's, he's just not doing his homework. He's not doing anything. She said, I know. She said, what can we do? I said, well, what's he, what, he's just got himself a new car. It was a, a Porsche or something. She said, I'll tell you what, I'll FedEx you the keys for the Porsche. <laughs> and, he, and he can't have it back until he does his homework and on the call next week i'm sat there and he goes you know i am just so busy i haven't done my homework i said and i just held the keys up and i said do, they, do these look familiar to you and he went well have you got a porsche now i said well not quite <laughs> but i do have keys to one i said it's, it's you know it's it's a whatever color it was this sort of thing and, and it, the penny dropped and he went nuts. I mean, literally, he lost it. Brah, off he went. And he hung up on me and off he went again. But he phoned back about half an hour later. And he said, he said, brilliant. He said, you know what? He said, I, I hated you for about half an hour. And I was going to fire you, sack you, kill you. I was going to, you know, whatever. Then he said, I thought, well, actually, you know what? This is exactly what I need. So he said, I've done my homework. This is where you go. Can I have my keys back? <laughs> Amazingly, yeah, all of a sudden he's not so busy, and yeah, I mean, my, my question in that in that sense is, what what kind of coach do you want me to be? Exactly. exactly. Now, now I, I I know roughly what I should be because I've got their disc profile. Yeah, yeah. So I know roughly how to communicate, but I want them to say because I want them to have ownership over it. Yeah. So I say, yeah, what what kind of coach do you want me to be? Yeah, you know, nine times ninety nine times out of a hundred. They say tough. Yeah. I want you to be tough. It's absolutely it's crazy. Yeah. Uh because you're paying someone to be to be tough on you. And, yeah. and I go, great. You know, they, they, I can do that. Off I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's they degrees, of, degrees of toughness, isn't it? That's the yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You've got to do what you say after that. So that yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I massively introduce them to the way I run a coaching session. So I say mm. something like, you know. I'm here to celebrate your wins as well. Yeah. So, what wins have you had this week? Yeah. Uh, we are, what, uh, my question is, what what's um, what's made this week great for you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, and I, I just introduced them. Okay, well, let's look at the numbers. What are the numbers telling you? What do we need to do about that? That's kind of the structure of my coaching session. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I make sure that um, they are really. That, that, that's really a key part, I think, is Absolutely. They, they know what to expect. Because once I've asked the question, I do oh, I say I don't do it very basic. I do, there are a couple of questions I ask every single week, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Once I start doing that, and you know, after week six or seven, they they just give me the answer. That's right. You know, they just, you know, before I even ask the question, they just give me the answer. Yeah. Um, so it's important that you start to introduce them to that. And I think, I think as well, we, we have to have a, 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 the difference between maybe um, sort of pure life coaching and, and business coaching. I think the two do overlap. There's a, there's a big yeah. one. Is that the focus that we as business coaches would have to have is numbers. You know, show me what are the sales, the profits, the cash, the conversion, the, whatever it is, the, the key numbers in the business. And I will always ask, show me your numbers. You know, show what they are. Send me yeah. you know, your numbers before we have our conversation. And, you know, yeah. most of my... my favorite client send me a, a focus sheet an objective sheet <laughs> i'm gonna ask you you should do that you should enforce that David. i should, should enforce that yeah exactly. <laughs> we'll sort that out uh, but, no, but they send the numbers across first which always show me the numbers because it, we can have a compelling conversation about business and strategy and all this sort of thing but unless it's showing up in either the pnl or the balance sheet it, it's almost not worth yeah. it and i'm really clear i want to have tangible 
results and numbers coming through, even if they're not great, if the numbers are bad, even better, you want to know so we can fix it, but I have focus on numbers. And that in itself for a lot of people is very painful to report. You know, what? give me a bank yeah. balance today. What's the much cash is in the bank today? They go, no idea. Yeah. Well, you know, you need to know. And it's that disciplined approach to numbers as well. Yeah, but it gets them into the discipline of it. So yeah. they'll start doing that. If you if you got to be really careful from the outset, you know, it's modeling behavior on that. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, as soon as you let it slip, they won't do it, they'll get away with it. Yeah. And then they get away with it the next week and they get away with it the next week. And I think, uh, you know, but then after a while, they'll start to do that for themselves. Yes. And that's yeah. that's a great moment. You know, when when you get somebody who wasn't into numbers at all, they go, yeah, I'll be looking at numbers. <laughs> and just, yeah, I think that's a great thing, right? Um, you know, so yeah, being, being fair. But a, a lot of my first sessions was positioning. Yeah. Um, so as you talked about focus sheets, uh, you know, I expect a focus sheet. And, uh, you know, 24 hours in advance. And, you know, that's so that we get the, the, the benefit of the session, right? So that I'm not asking you stupid questions during the session, right? So I want to make the time valuable, right? So <laughs> so, um, so I, I set out my store with that, um, you know, and my CNEs as well. You know, I expect you to come to my growth club every nine days. You know, that's a planning day. Take it out of your business. You know, you'll meet the other clients there and, um, you know, it's a day for you to be not in your business, but on your business and it's completely free and it's part of the program, but, you know, I expect you to be there and, and uh, you know, I'll make it really clear from the start. Just out of interest and so that, because when we're dealing with either, you know, executives, business owners, entrepreneurs, whatever, whatever it is, there always, there's, there's, there's an ego thing get can get in the way sometimes and they, they think, they think they want a coach, but actually they want a consultant or actually they want a trainer or, or actually they just want somebody to have a you know, coffee and a chat with and, and getting the ego to positioning to drop and to be the, the, the leader in the relationship. I'm reasonably clear that you know we're partners on the coaching relationship, but I'm a bit more in control than they are. I'm going to guide and push and control. Do you ever have any sort of pushback against that where they don't they feel they don't want a, a boss or a manager or something like that? I've, I've seen it a few times, that's all over the it's easy to correct it, it's okay. But do you yeah. have that sort of pushback at all? Pretty much every one of my clients. <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> I mean I see it a fair a fair bit, in fairness. Uh, people are business owners because they don't make good employees. Absolutely. In, in general, right? I mean, um, so so all of a sudden to have this guy who is checking up on them. Yeah. And you know, okay, well, that number says that. Well, what does that mean? Why is it not, you know, why is it not a 10? Why is it a five? Why is it not an eight? You know? Um, can be un- can be uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable. Right? It is. Um, you know, and um, I think it's just for you know, all through the marketing and the sales process, I'm saying, you know. I, I don't care what your number is. Yeah, it doesn't matter what your numbers are. In fact, the lower the better, that means you can do more about it. Right? I genuinely don't care. Yeah. Um, you know, my question is, how do we move forward with this? Yes. Yeah. And I think that we, this sort of, the, again, the first session sets the scene for all that. And I, I find if we get it right on the first session with the principles, the plan, the vision, and we do it in a 90 day sprint, if you like, we position it all up, it tends to make it a lot easier. Um, and but also then we do it again at the first start of the next 90 days it's almost not you will rewind to a start point okay you're only as good as your last 90 days here we go again yeah. what's next what's the plan where are we going to um but the, i find the relationship changes and y- you can only coach in the way that you sell it, it is in my mm. experience so you've got to be consistent with it. there's no point in selling in one particular way and turning up and being something different no shocks and surprises and that sort of consistency about it i think is really important too yeah, definitely. Consistency is absolutely key. And, um, you know, I think it's, it's you know, asking asking those tough questions, but doing it in a way that isn't, isn't you know, aggressive or yeah. manipulative or anything like that, you know. Do you, do you um, call your clients names sometimes? Do I call my clients names? Yeah, oh, as in... Yeah, because I do, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a not in a bullying <laughs> way, but I'll just, I'll go, well, yeah, you, but you're an idiot, aren't you? What, what, what yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah. with, a, with a twinkle in your eye, I think if you get the relationship right, you can, you can have that conversation with people. Because if we're very deferential to our clients as coaches, they try to dominate 
us and it should yeah. be an equal partnership where they can you know let off a bit of steam but you know so can we and we can go you know come on this is this is crazy you know whatever and talk in that sort of terms and sometimes i think it's absolutely fine as well yeah i think that's what we're paid for and one of my favorite questions is probably one of your favorite in fact i think i know it is you know what what you know what do you think might happen if you if you did do that <laughs> you know, yes. what do you think might happen if you didn't think you were an idiot or you, yeah. Well, yeah, uh, so i think that's you know one of my favorite questions. i often say i've said that in most coaching sessions you know uh you know what do you you know what do you think might happen if you did do this yes well i might make more sales oh well, exactly Right. <laughs> but, but, but I think it again, it seems, and this is this follows through not just from the first session, but I find that I have to have uh, as much, if not probably more, confidence and certainty in their ability to achieve than they've got, because I'm I'm their cheerleader as well. I'm, I believe yeah. them. I've got it, but it's got to be genuine as well, because if I don't think they can do it, I've got to tell them, you know, and go do something else. And sometimes I find when we give people that, well, you know, you're you're really good at this. This is a skill and a strength of yours. This is where this is your sweet spot. This is where you can really add value. And they go, oh, okay. Because nobody's told them that before. They don't get that level of feedback. So we've got to be accountable yeah. and you know, yeah, well, you're an idiot you know, for not doing it. But also the positive uh but 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 accurate cheerleader i never you know, tell people they're great if i don't think they are at something but when they get a win or whatever it is cheer them up and keep going but build them up as well let them leave on a high yeah definitely well i think that's important you, they've got to walk out that first session on a high absolutely um and excited right however they feel about paying you money and getting to that position they have to walk out that session on a high that's you know that's absolutely key and, and part of that is you know you're right you've got to you you are there too I, th I think um my rule is as soon as i'm more emotionally invested in the business than they are Yes. it's time to go yes um it's time for me to not be here uh because it just gets frustrating and then you get resentful and then the ratio breaks down it's going to break down anyway so you may as well just end it yeah, it, just turns, <laughs> it, it turns into a marriage if we're not careful you know we don't want that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah you've got more practice than you've got to be you got to be careful yeah, exactly you've got to be careful <laughs> um what i just out of interest I, I, in terms of you know using your personality I, I sense you you and i our personalities are reasonably similar but it, it, i find a lot of coaches they use a script and a process and i've seen them yeah. do it where they have a coaching conversation and it's so you know so tell me about your sales and they go yeah, okay uh, uh tell me about your profit and they have no idea there's no rapport there's no leading through it's all tick box yeah. I, I i know the answer to this one but i, I take it you don't have that prescriptive approach to no not that to that degree anyway for you do. not to that i do have a structure i definitely have a structure because i think you have to hit all the points and yeah. um you know I, you know i'm a big fan of a checklist and that's that's what it is really have we talked about that 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 um you know and i think you know pilots for, for me i know people are they they steer clear of checklists and stuff like that but a pilot with twenty thousand hours flying experience will still use a checklist yeah. to start the aircraft sure. and taxi the aircraft and fly the aircraft and, and that to me and so so i i take this a similar approach in that i have a structure you know i always start with their wins um, yeah. I always ask them, you know, we always go through the goals for the last week. Always, you know, what was good, what was bad, why didn't you achieve that? Why didn't you? Achieve that? Mm -hmm. And then going to the numbers. What are the numbers telling us? What? And I'll, I'll say, my, you know, my question around that is, um, I'll, I'll simply say, what are the numbers in your business telling you? Yeah. And they go, well, which number? Like turnover, profit, leads. Which number? Yeah. Don't care. Which one do you want to talk about? Yeah um you know which one's most important to you um and that you know, if you leave it open like that you get what they're worried about or not worried about just out of, again this is something when it comes to the to pure coaching or the intervention coaching or whatever it is that we do and i've found this when you say to somebody what number is most important to you and they go sales now i know that it's not sales i know it's, gonna be, it's something different and what do you do you let them get away with it or do you go well, okay pick another you know try again because you want right. to get we to get down to profit here somewhere you know do, yeah. do you how do you handle that how do you guide or, or do you or don't you is it appropriate to guide do you think in those sort of spaces so I, I, so I think it's really i always know what the, what answer i want 
Yeah, yeah. Say, 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 is price, yeah, say I am after profit. Yeah. So what's the most important number to you? Uh, the turnover is pretty low at the moment. So it's okay, well, what does that mean? Mm. And, and then they'll say something like, well, what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? Oh, that means our profit is low. All right, <laughs> what are we going to do about that? You know? uh, Correct. So, Correct. Um, so yeah, um, you know, and I think I, I do it through questioning. So um, I always find that the T-Grow method is a good mm-hmm. kind of method to follow. So topic, um, uh, what is the G stand for? Uh, goal. So what's the ideal around, around that? What's the reality right now? Uh, what what are your options, mm-hmm. and then and then what what is your way forward? So um, I I kind of I'm always running. In fact, on top of my coaching sheet, yeah. I have T Grow. <laughs> right, okay, great. Yeah. So I know everything we talk about. I want to I want to try go through T Grow in my head if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. And, and do do you find? And again, this is not just in the first session, but I find that sometimes um, clients are embarrassed to give bad news. Uh, and I and I get it because if there's something goes wrong or whatever it is, and they go, look, well, haven't done this. This happened. That happened, and they feel very sort of self-conscious, embarrassed about giving the numbers across. How, how do you handle that? Because you know, when, when when life is good and business is growing, it's like rah rah and cheer up and everything's amazing. But in reality, you know, between us as a group of coaches on here, we know that for a, a third of the time, it's going to be hard slog. There's going to be stuff is going to happen and fall yeah. and break and snap and whatever that sort of thing. How do you how do you, how do you handle that when they've got bad news to talk about with you? So I I, I always think you, you can find something good in everything. So um, I, I can't think of an example right now, but you know I'll say something like, okay, so like how did that go out of ten? You know, and yeah. and you know uh, they'll say something like, oh, they're three, yeah. uh, and like, okay, well. Okay, well, why a three? You know, why why not a two? Put it yeah. that way. Well, I did that. I did that part really well. You know, totally agree. Uh, yeah, yeah, you are great at that. Well done, fantastic. Well, blah, blah. okay. How do we turn that three into a ten? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's. I don't know if you do anything. Do you do anything different, or is that? No, no. Uh, I think it, it's scaling it. I think that. I mean, I mean yeah. I, what brought it home to me was, and I think the responsibility we have as coaches is that they're. That because we build that relationship and trust. And I had a client this years ago, and it was after about two or three months into the coaching, and he said, I need to talk to you, you know, uh, separately to the coaching program, all this sort of thing. Oh, crikey, what's going on? And we met in this hotel lobby in Birmingham. And he said, look, he said, uh, uh, when I tell you about my background and what I've done that I haven't revealed to you so far and how things really are in the business, you're not going to like this. You won't want to be my coach and it's going to be horrible. And oh, crikey. Anyway, off he went and he told me all this stuff. Doesn't matter what he told me. He's like, all this stuff about, you know, there was prison and there was police and debts and it was, it was pretty horrific stuff. They've been involved. And I'm sat there and while he's telling me all this stuff, going through my mind is I'm thinking, what I say next, when, when he's finished, what I say next is going to be pivotal in his yeah. life. You know, life, the, yeah. How, what I said, yeah. I'm thinking, what the heck do I say? Because there's no manual for this. <laughs> um, I, I, there's no, you can't look, let me just check on page 54. To see what I was supposed <laughs> yeah. to say, you know? And, uh, and he finished and he said, so what do you think? And I, and, and, and I said to him, I said, well, I thought it was something serious. And he went, what? <laughs> I said, well, I thought, it was, I thought you were going to tell me something. I said, this is nothing. This is just, this is fixable. This is doable. I've seen worse than this. And he went, really? I went, well, yeah, and I have, but it's like crikey. And, but, and, after, and he said to me, he said, that for him, that acceptance that it wasn't, it was fixable, it was okay, I was okay with it and all this sort of thing, for him was a huge relief. Now, I don't know if that's coaching or counseling or i'm not really sure what it is but we have to have that ability for ourselves to be able to go into this coach mode and go oh there's going to be these you know critical moments in the coaching relationship where we only may have them once every six months or something but we've got to be ready for it to catch these these people and their emotions yeah. and their stories because what they tell us in the sales meeting is not always true as you said they, they do tell lies to us it's always never it's always never true david it's always never true but i think it's um I, I, yeah, I agree. I don't know if it's coaching or, or therapy or or what, but um, you know, I coach people who have very different, almost extreme, almost polar opposites political views to me, or mm. you know, views about religion or any, you know anything. Yeah, that's okay. Absolutely. As far as I'm concerned, yeah, that is fine. NLP has a principle, 
uh, which is everyone's map of the world is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the map is not the territory. Yeah. And and that's me. The territory is not their, their, their political views or their views on religion or whatever, whatever, whatever. Sure. Doesn't, okay, there's, there's a caveat to that. You know, if it's, you know, against the law or anything like that, I'm going to, yeah. you know, clearly. Yeah. But, um, but that's not what we're here to talk about. What we're here to talk about is how we move forward, how we move the business forward, right. how we employ more people, or how we make a better life for ourselves and others. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I mean, this is that's we've gone off a little bit on a tangent from the first coaching session. <laughs> but I think it's, but it, it sets the scene for the whole you know, relationship. And what I found is that over the years, um, it is a, a, a real key conversation, and because they remember it, it's like it's like a sort of like an initiation ceremony. People will remember that first coaching session more than we will, because we have lots of first coaching sessions, but they only ever have one, and they do remember it. And it's important we take it seriously as a big moment in their in in their business and their lives it's a fresh start for a lot of people as well and not to be you know underestimated i think too yeah definitely i, I always say you know the first three months i'm going to know if i've got a client for life after the first three months yeah i think if they leave me after three months you know that i think i always think that is the point they're going to leave me between yeah. kind of three and five months right. i imagine yeah. they you know if their relationship isn't going anywhere that's that's when they're going to leave. Yeah. And you can sort of tell they don't buy into it and they don't allow us to do our job. If you like, they fight or they push back or they don't participate um, because we participated a hundred percent, but they've got to participate with us at a hundred percent, allow us to do what we do and, you know, and listen and, and go along with it as well. So that's it. Yeah, definitely. And you know, we, there, how we communicate is the response we get. So isn't it just, you know, isn't, if, it just yeah. isn't it just, so. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, fabulous. So, um, Gareth, thank you. It's brilliant. Um, should we open it up to any questions? We've got sort of 20 minutes left now. Anybody got any questions or thoughts, or observations? Just uh, maybe unmute or jump in. So, um, uh, Marie, I think, is unmuted. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Um, so, I remember my first coaching session. Yeah. And I was telling my um, boyfriend at that time, she didn't do anything. I just sat there, I was talking, she didn't do anything. So I was just wondering, because we talked about last week that um, during this discovery call or sales call or whatever you talk, uh, you call it, you kind of describe what they want to do, where they want to go and all this kind of thing, but we don't really explain how we're going to do that. So that may have an expectation of what is coaching that is actually different from what it is in reality, how it looks like, yeah. uh, which is basically us asking questions most of the time. So how do you bring that in the session? Like, do you make any kind of explanation or something at the beginning or... Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think, you know, one one phrase that I absolutely live by now, which was told to me by um, by a very wise man a few years ago, is positioning isn't everything, it's the only thing. And I think it's so, 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 so important, you know, making sure you communicate honestly and early as well about what is going to happen, um, how how this pans out. You know, I'll make it really clear: it's not a magic pill. Mm. You know, coaching is not a magic pill. It's going to take time. You know, I, I'm going to be free, but not yet. I think is the the thing. Um, you know, and I just think everything. Find out, find out what goes wrong in a in a coaching relationship, mm. and position it at the very start and position how you deal with that i think that's really key david i think, I think you know this, I mean, the, the first the bulk of the, the the first session will be positioning this is how we're going to go this is what i expect from you here's the rules of the game here's what i I'm, you can expect this from me i expect this from you here's how there's the mechanics of it um and then towards the end it's okay so we understand the framework now how do we bring it to life? What are we going to measure? What do you think we should do first? And, you know, it could be just be a case of, well, you know the business better than I do. 
what five things are broken in the business we need to fix right now before mm. we start something new, you know? And they go, oh, well, we need to look at this, this, this. Great, let's get the broken stuff out of the way first, for example, and then we can move on to the, the growth things. There's no point building a growth business if, you know, the, the substance is broken. So I think positioning, rules of the game, what I expect from them, what they can expect from me. And one of my rules um, is I'm, I guarantee I'm going to be on time, and but I expect you to be on time as well. And uh, I think pretty much uh you know i'm always i open at the zoom call at five two or whatever it is and then they jump in and you know over the years i've only been late i think probably half a dozen times i mean rare of all the meetings and things we've done so i said i am going to be on time for you if i can't make it i'll let you know but if you can't make it you need to let me know as well the rules reflect back and once they get it they're, they're fine with it but it should be a very busy coaching session actually is minor agreements we need to have minor agreements about positioning rules of the game context um planning conversations booking meetings and you know and i'll, I'll say you, know, you would have book a meeting with me you speak to lynn not me um, which is true because i don't handle my diary so lynn lynn sorts it out for me speak to lynn and uh, she'll let you know and whatever so that, that's just about positioning so it should be a very busy quite intense uh, coach uh coach a heavy session actually it should taper off then you know, it should be a lighter touch from a coaching perspective in future sessions but session number one is really about here's taking control here's what we're going to do how we're going to do it here's a tool here's a template blah blah, blah. off we go any questions great we're off so it should be quite in being i think in my experience be quite intense actually yeah and activity focused as well i think yeah exactly, exactly. i think yeah get them doing stuff definitely yeah totally Okay, yeah, a great, great question. Okay, Good. thanks. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Any other questions? Yeah, please. Yeah, we're just far away. We're here. We've got three hours yet, so we're all right. We've got... No, just a, <laughs> just a small one. You mentioned that uh, in your first meeting, you should always give something away, uh, or you should give something, obviously something to do or something to read to the book. Yeah. Um, obviously, you have built up your database of your own video stuff, but I haven't, and I'm not sure about the others for that. Yeah. But would would say would um recommending a specific TED video on an issue that you know that relates to the client work well, as long as it relates to what you want to do with the client. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A, a TED video, uh, it could be somebody else's book. And it's, it depends on how they how they want to absorb information as well. If they are you know, visual type people, the video is great because they tend to watch a video and away they go. But if they're more kinesthetics, for example, we can find this out from you know being engaged with them. Maybe they, they like to physically have the touch and feel and smell of a, of a document, a book. So sometimes I'll choose a book rather than a video, depends on them. But what, what I think it does, it gives them something to do, but also it makes it real. So when somebody says to them, how is it, how do you go with your coach? They go, it was great. We're doing this, this, and this. I've got to do a bit of homework. I'm watching this video. I've got a book to read. And they go, wow, that's great. If it comes, I think, as Marie said, if it's a case of, well, how did it go with your coach? Well, don't know, nothing happened really. It's a bit, oh, it's a bit disappointing, you know, that we should increase the, the pace. So absolutely a TED video or whatever you think is appropriate for them. Um, and you give them a similar video, have a look at this, see what you think. But also be specific afterwards. What give me five things you learned from that video? You know, what you'd like to implement, and we'll talk about it next week, you know, or send your notes across. So yeah, absolutely. Anything else would uh, help a thing. Um yeah. I, I, I don't have my own books or anything. I'm not a published author like David. Not yet. Uh, so so I yet, yet, I think it's, I was I was looking at it because usually I have a stack, but um I, I don't for something, but um I give away other people's books, but I will know from the sales meeting yeah. or from the marketing whatever what they need or or yeah initially my go-to book to give away is the e-myth mm -hmm. um yes that's a real easy book it's quite small easy to read applies to most businesses yeah. so if they don't know what to give them i'll give them the e-myth but mm -hmm. if they want to build a business that uh, they want to sell, I'll give them built to sell. Yeah. Um, if they want better negotiation, I'll give them never split the difference. If it's cash flow, I'll give them uh, I'll give them a, you know, profit first or something like that. Um, so I'll, I'll tailor it. So it's not not always the same. Yeah. Uh, my, my, the the go to one is the e myth, yeah. um, but I like to make sure it's it's personal to them in terms of what they need in their business. That's that's how I do it. 
great question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any anything else, Lena, Sue? Any any, any questions or? Like stunned silence look at this is this is good i don't know if it's a good thing or not i don't know maybe maybe it is a good thing i'm not so sure yeah you could argue that you've been very informative so everything is covered yeah, yeah there, <laughs> that, that's what I'll, I'll take it as being that we've covered every yeah. uh every base Re reframing it's called as uh has susan unmuted for she has a question no oh, just it? really just to sort of say that all makes perfect sense guys thank you ah my goodness well you're very kind you can come again this is brilliant so you're you're my favorite now so this is great oh <laughs> well, i got an invitation for today but i've missed the last four i didn't get invitations for those oh i've been told off now haven't you oh, <gasps> uh, or, get what well, gareth why haven't you sent the invitation no i'm joking it's me I think <laughs> I my apologies my apologies well you're in the, you're officially in that you're always in the gang but okay i'll make sure they come around yeah but we'll check on the linkedin circulation for it it's, yeah, a, it's you, a weekly uh, gig so you said that um you had them on youtube so i take it the previous four because i'm i'm in the same boat i'm not complaining about not having the link because it could, it could i might have missed it but um okay yeah no i was too sure. busy um so what what, what I normally what, your... what I normally do is I create a, a LinkedIn event and then I in, invite people to it, but maybe that doesn't get through to everybody. But again, we could I can ping it in an email or something might be better to make sure everybody gathers it properly. But to make it, okay, but but point taken, point taken. I'll uh, I'll I'll make sure that everybody gets a copy uh, invite. But yeah, it's at the same time. Have you got the recordings of the previous ones? The pre previous ones, I do. I send those out to anybody who's on the call. I'll, I will send out a copy of the recording. Um, it'll be a, a, a YouTube link. Uh, given the French French internet, it takes about six hours to download this thing. So it might be tomorrow when you get it. <laughs> I'll send the link out to the YouTube channel, and they're all on there anyway. I'll put. I'm gonna. I will put into a separate folder as we go along, and then we'll build up as we go, and cool. uh, sort of build as we go. But yeah, I'll, but I will at point take. I'll make sure we get the correct. Um, invitations, timely invitations out as well. So see what comes through. Good. Okay. Actually, Ooh. I had a second question. Yeah, of course. Yeah, go yeah, for it. Go for it. Quickly, because you, I think you talked about it at the beginning. So, one not to do during the first session. What is the like? No go. Don't do that ever. Um, <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to think of what gone, what where it's gone wrong in my experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, please share um, so I don't do it. Yeah. Um, what? Okay, I'll, do. I'll just a quick, quick one. I'll, yeah, this one is be real careful. For, for me, it's like a personal thing. Be really careful with humor. Um, I, I have to gauge the person first before I launch into cracking any wise cracks and that sort of thing. I've got that wrong a few times where it, yeah, it hasn't gone. It's gone well. So I'm you know, start off slow and gauge the personality, but gauge everything else that's going on. And uh, yeah, so watch out for use of humor, I think is a key one as well. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. I think uh, what not to do. I, I just, you, I think, I think overwhelm, I think overwhelm mm. is what not to do. Yeah. Um, and just, make sure they know it's not an overnight thing, you know, yeah. and because otherwise, you know, as coaches, we're so keen to go, ah, oh, time's your shoe. Oh, there's that, there's that tool. Oh, oh cash flow. Easy, easy. Take that tool. And I just think it's, um, you know, you got to you, avoid overwhelm is a key, yeah. is a key pitfall. Yeah. And I think it's, and this is something I think I, I think I do this automatically, but I do know I, I've, noticed it a couple of times over the years is if they ask me because we, we when they were in, in luxembourg for example or the uk or wherever we, we've got the clients we're doing our workshops be aware that the client you're working with may well know either other clients that you've got or other people in the network and if they say and i've, got, and I, I've never done this but i know somebody who has and they go oh yeah do you know do you know Bob Smith? And they've gone, oh yeah, he's a right idiot. You know, blah, blah, blah. Of course, well, Bob Smith's their cousin, you know, he's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> end of conversation. If you're going to speak about anybody, it's a general rule, not a coaching rule, actually. If you're going to talk about anybody, it's always in the affirmative and always in the positive because you don't know what their relationship is or what they know, or what they don't know, that sort of thing. So be real careful about starting off the conversation or uh, about, well, you know, oh, I met with so-and-so on, on a networking event and this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of Joe? Or have you heard of, of 
with Karen and you go, yeah, I've heard that you know, she's a disaster. Well, mm. they, yeah, because you don't know who they know. So just be, you've got to be really sort of vanilla, I suppose, if you like, very mm. bland to start off with. And you can build up that relationship as you go along when you find you've got people in common and this sort of thing. But yeah, just be care be careful of criticizing uh, you know, people that they, they may know as well. They might be married to them if you're not careful. That, that never goes down well. <laughs> I've got, I, I try and um, something not to do mm-hmm. is to get them telling their friends straight away that they that they they got a coach because I'm not going to get results for them straight away. I'm going to get results, but not straight away. And I always, I like I say, positioning is every, is is the only thing. Is not everything is the only thing, right? And I say, look, um, we're going to go on a journey. And, you know, it's going to be great. And we, you know, in about, in about six months, we're going to have a story to tell. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so let's, let's not tell the story until we're there. And when we're ready to tell the story, let's tell that story together. Mm-hmm. And so that's because I don't want them in, in two weeks time to their mate to go, Oh, is he using a coach? What, you know, what's he like? You know, oh, he's rubbish. Nothing's happened yet. You know, he promised to be a millionaire by now and you know, it's not happening. You know, I want to try and avoid that happening. So that's my phrase for avoiding that. But what it also does is it positions referrals. Cause what I'm actually saying when I say that phrase is in six months time, I'm going to want you to tell your friends about me. <laughs> and, yeah, so, so let's do that together. That's that's what I'm doing there. Because yeah. um, I have had it before where some, you know, we know, session one, you know, somebody then goes and plays squash with their mate. Oh, I'm using this new business coach. Oh, what's his like? Oh, it's rubbish. You know, all he talked about this session was numbers. Oh, it's rubbish. Yeah, blah, blah. And it just didn't end well. So, yeah, that's, that's how I get around that. Yeah, I've got a great point. And, and just final one for me thinking is don't overpromise. Because if you over over promise performance, uh, whatever it is, or pace, I see Lena's nodding here. It was, it's a, it resonated here. We, we all do it. We all do this because we're like we're sort of more not desperate. We really want the client to be excited, enthusiastic, and we promise this, and we promise that, and we do this and do that to keep the enthusiasm there. And I've really learned that less is more in that area because if we sort of under promise and they over get some they go wow this is amazing they think more of us but a lot of coaches will over promise yeah we're going to do this we're going to do that we'll do this and it's going to be amazing and whatever and you can't manage it all there's no way so less is definitely more in that area so be careful of it but uh, again when when i started out 19 20 years ago it was very easy to fall into it as so over promise and do whatever and i would find myself doing spreadsheets for people and do writing stuff and doing letters and I became like an admin assistant not a coach if not very careful and yeah. now I, I'll still look at people's documents and review and refresh and go okay look at this think about that but I'm not I'm not their admin assistant um, so be careful of getting too operationally involved keep that distance of you're the coach this is a relationship this is what they're going to do they do the work you guide them and you support them but you're not there it's as their PA or VA, Marie, but give it up for that trap as well for you, maybe. Um, you're there to help and guide and kick where needed, that's all. Can I just jump in on that? Yeah, yeah. I, think, I mean, it did very much resonate. <laughs> I saw it yes. uh, Because that is just so important, especially in the first couple of meetings where you don't know the person yet. Yeah. And you don't know if they're actually going to go through it and actually do the work themselves because we can give them the coaching but if they don't do it and don't take action nothing will happen so if you promise too hard then they will never uh, succeed and and therefore it is as you say it's better to be a bit Arm and modest about it and then exceed expectations so. absolutely yeah great point no it's it, it, it's an easy trap to fall into i think because we want them to do well and li- sort of like and respect what we're doing as well get value from it and we tend to put too much in and i you know i've found I've, i have a, a client for example and it doesn't nobody knows who they are it's okay but the, we, we pitch I, I normally pitch we have as well a, a one-on-one uh, coaching session for up to an hour that's what that's what the standard program is but for this particular client it's only ever and I time it on the on the Zoom call. It's between five and seven minutes. That's it. <laughs> Every week it's like crikey. And uh, they come on and go, hi, great, uh, good week, done this, done that. That's broke. This is fit. What do you think about this? Go, okay, thank you. Great, good. 
See you next week. Have a nice week. Fantastic. And, 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 and they'll say to me, you know, loving your work. And it's all these, they're, they're really great. And I'm thinking, <laughs> crikey, this is like, you know, seven minutes. And But they've been with us for seven and a half years now. I checked. And the same thing, that the value is in their mind. And I'm, th- I'm sat there thinking every week, crikey, how's this working, you know? And uh, perhaps they'll see this video. I don't know. I'll stretch it out now. But it's absolutely fine. The value is in what they do when we're not there that's the value of the coaching not what we do when with them it's as you say it's how we motivate and inspire them and get them to do action that they wouldn't ordinarily do and if it means we have a catch-up and it's seven minutes on average at the end of a week great that's a huge value for them they get they're getting great value the business is doing really well and if i'm not very careful i think something the coaches have to be aware of is it can't be about us the coaching program is about them not us. And I may feel I want to be on the phone for 45 minutes to give more value to them. But that's not what it takes. It's them. If they get value, it's in their numbers. They're happy and they're getting you know, doing great things. Who am I to argue? So, yeah, don't make it about us as coaches. Well, I think it's, it's an easy one to fall into. I have, a, I have a very similar client. He jumps on and goes, two questions. Number one, Facebook ads, yes or no? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, yeah, brilliant, good, good answer, love that. And uh, new employee, yes or no? Uh, yes, uh, well, brilliant, fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, love to see you next week. Yeah, see you next week. This is absolutely crazy, right? It's, <laughs> but it's true. Yeah, though, but if you know, if you know your business, or if they know your business, like I know when I have got my call with you scheduled day, I got flip. I promised to do this. I said I committed to this, and at least for three days before, I just start doing everything together. Yeah, and with one of my clients, what I do I, every week, I ask what her, or, you know, what the plans are for this week. It's a startup, and then in the week, I have always ping her and WhatsApp. So how's that going? Yeah. Because if she hasn't done anything about it, that is a, the lo and behold, every single week. So for whatever we agree to, and not all of it, but some progress is there, and part of that is that one message during the week. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. You know, and that, that client who said, John John says two questions, you know, yes or no, and, you know, I'll guarantee I'll get a, an email from him on Friday afternoon yeah. with all his wins. He'll have a new contract, he'll have a new something, or, you know, he will have, you know, made, uh, you know, he'll have the best month ever or whatever. You know, every Friday afternoon, regular clockwork, he gives me his wins. You know, I haven't asked for that. It's just something, it's a habit he's fallen into. Great, you know? uh, Yeah, yeah, no, I absolutely love it. But, uh, yeah, I think, um, you know, I think it's it's really interesting. That first conversation is just really interesting. I, really I, interesting. You, you made a very good point, and I know you both do it, but I think is is when you understand, once you have the disc profile of your client, that's, you know, the trigger, because your client, you just mentioned, Gareth, he clearly is a guy, and I'm like that. I like praise. I like to be, you know, I'm, I'm a total A profile. I like praise. So tell me. So I don't want to let David down. So that's why I'm doing it, because I like David to say to you about that. Yeah. So but, you know, <laughs> so understanding yeah. your client and getting that disc profile takes, and I, I haven't done that, admittedly, but that you will come and trigger that, takes away half the battle, because we all have different pain points or, or action points. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally. Yeah, it's, great point. It's knowing, I think, how to... I was going to use the word manipulate, and it's a wrong term. I think it's how to persuade and motivate. And, and influence. It's like having influence. children. Influence. I have influence. two children, and they, you know, you'd say one to this and one to the other. Yeah. And yeah. Different things because they respond yeah. differently, you know. Absolutely. This is, yeah. this is the art of it, I think. Um, yeah. But yeah, but it's, it, you're right, but it, it sort of it depends on, on what people need. And that's, that's the art of what we do, I think. I have, but also, I think, you know, I will get a a whatsapp message or a facebook message or a linkedin message and you know what i have an executive client in luxembourg and he's great you know he plans this sort of thing and he 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 needs and, and i want him to as well because it's great for me he drops me a note on on, on linkedin messenger just to let you know i've done this made these calls that's happened this is going well great and i was going fantastic keep it up you know like i'm, I'm his cheerleader and you know because it can be a lonely place out there for some people especially on lockdown they can't get into offices so i think having those little nudges whether it's an email or WhatsApp or mm. Facebook or whatever it is, absolutely great. I don't know, the, the coaching is a, and, and I would say it's a process, not just an event each week. I'm with you all the way, every, every hour of every day. You know, we only talk for, for, for an hour or whatever it is. Mm. But if you need to reach out, drop me a note, ping me a message, whatever it is, 
great. And I'll do the same. I'll drop him a note. You know, Hi, have a great weekend. Or you know, I, I sent one to another client because I know he, he, had a, uh, he hadn't done something. I put, I put a note on WhatsApp. It was just, remember, I am watching. That was it. And that was what I sent Because <laughs> I knew that would be what he needed to receive that morning. And it was great. He was all fine about it. So little nudges like that, when you get the personality right, can really establish that. I think the relationship of the, the coach and the client as well. But uh, okay, so. I mean, I've got, I've got one more point. I know we've run over time. Oh, please, I've got right. one more point about that first session. I think, um, you, know, if, if, you know, just out of uh, you know, coincidence, that, that client jumps on and asks me two questions. You know, back in January, I think we, we started and um, he said, I want to, this is what I want to achieve. I want to franchise, franchise the business. That's it. You know, that, that kind of thing. You know, I had to be really honest with him in that first session that his business wasn't ready for franchising. Mm. You know, there was no way it was ready for franchising. It, it can be franchised in the future, absolutely, but we weren't going to franchise it. You know, you know, during the sales meeting, he said, "You know, by by June, we want to franchise it." You know, absolutely no way that was going to happen. Had to be really honest and say, "Look, we are going to get to the franchising thing, but we need to sort out A, B, C, and D first. Yeah, and you know, let's look at franchising in Q four. Yeah, you know, let's have a look. You know, let's start to test the water in Q4, and I think that's really important. That first session is to be really honest about yes. about timelines as well. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, great point. Great point. Okay, any final questions or, or thoughts, observations? Anybody like to jump in? I'm, I'm going to take it as we are genii and we've covered every base. This is going to be <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take yeah, that. exactly. Exactly. Okay, so uh, Gareth, thank you. Always a pleasure. I know we sort of we tag team this. We're back uh, same time, cha same channel next week. I will promise to make sure everybody gets the proper invitation so they can all jump on it. I'll, that's my my commitment from from me, if you like. Um, and you know, if we can get on this call, um, we can get 10, 15, 20 people. Well, then great. You know that there's more energy to us. It's part of the the conversation. I think I learn from these conversations. Well, great to connect with you guys. So I'll set it up for next Wednesday. Gareth, thank you. You're a rock star as always. Um, have a great week and uh, I'll see you uh, around as we go and if not before next week we do have a workshop next Thursday uh, afternoon from 2 till 3 30 Luxembourg time all about business scalability so um, I think most people have had the invitation for that uh, I hope anyway I'll make sure you get a copy of it you're welcome to jump it's free zoom uh, we've got 74 people signed up for it now which is really? uh, scary I know I don't know what happened there but anyway they won't all show up but we get a real good bunch of people on there and it's me talking about business scalability and systems that sort of thing you're welcome to jump onto that as well and just uh, keep the keep the conversation going but for now thank you you. great to see you all thank you hope it thank was you guys of interest it was really and help. have a great week have, have a holiday weekend in in luxembourg uh over the weekend every so, weekend you know, is a holiday weekend, weekend. weekend. <laughs> are, you, are you taking the are you taking the bridge on friday as well lena just to make it into a, a foot of course one yes of the first I, terms am. I learned. this time i am good you're so you sure as well one of the first things i learned was that they thought what's this taking the bridge what were they talking about these strange people but it's actually a very cool idea he's taking the fright anyways brilliant so have a great weekend thank you guys see Take you all care. soon and uh bye for now bye bye, bye.